Hey there, I'm Christy Wilhelmy from Garden Nerd. Today we're at my community garden plot. And it's mostly not to teach a lesson, but to share a point. Let's talk about the fallow garden. I don't know if you can tell from what's going on behind me, but with the exception of my tomatoes and peppers in that bed, I have not planted anything for the spring summer season. Why? Well, I got really busy. <laughs> One reason is I got really busy. The second reason is this plot was ravaged with gophers for all of winter and all of spring. And I just didn't want to lose another plant to this infestation. You can see here this front bed, this all used to be nasturtiums and the nasturtiums have been pockholed with gopher holes. Now I have been trapping using a tool called the gopher hawk and it's been working pretty well for me. I've caught three gophers but they've all been very small. The bigger ones don't fit through the catch on the on the trap and so I've had to wait for someone who works here in the community garden to trap gophers. And that takes a long time sometimes. Um, and we've had little to no success actually catching them. Between the gophers, the rabbits, the rats, and other wildlife that lives in this garden, it's become very difficult to grow here. Um, also, because the plot above me was abandoned for about a year and that happens in community gardening the gophers decided to take up residence up there and then come to my plot for snacks so basically i decided it was time to take a break and i just want to say for you if you feel like it's all too much and you need to take a break you absolutely can do that there are benefits to a fallow garden First of all, it lets the soil rest. You get to stop taxing the soil for nutrients for that season. Now, a lot of places do that over winter where they don't plant anything over winter. But here in sunny Southern California, the time that our garden goes dormant is really late summer uh, because it's too hot to plant anything new and we're just waiting for cooler temperatures in order to put in the stuff for fall. So. You can see I've got my cages here, but there's nothing growing underneath them. This bed, also cages to protect from the rabbits and the, uh, and the birds and the rats. This, these work really well for that. But nothing's planted underneath them because gophers. So now that the plot above me is more active and is being planted, the activity is dying down here. Plus, I'm taking the opportunity to let things go to seed which means I'll have a lot of volunteers come the rainy season. There's dill here that is all full of flower and those seeds will drop and I'll have volunteer dill all winter long. There are arugula plants back here where those go to seed every year. And I'm also letting some sweet pea flowers die back and set seed so that I can collect those for next season. As you can see, there's more to a fallow garden than just doing nothing. But if you want to do nothing, go ahead and do it. I like to let nature take over every once in a while to help soil rest, renew some plants on their own, and that will make gardening easier for me next season. So don't feel bad about taking a season off or even a whole year if you need to. I'm gonna be doing something like that myself. <laughs> <laughs> if you like this video, share it with your friends, and don't forget to turn on notifications to find out when our next video comes online. Consider becoming a Patreon subscriber to support all the free stuff we do here at Garden Nerd. And of course, check out my books when you're ready to grow more food, Gardening for Geeks, Grow Your Own Mini Fruit Garden, and my novel, Garden Variety. Happy gardening!